youth Tear upon the core of blasphemy Follow your prophet And on evil make a victory Let our righteousness be a role model to our children Making new generations of believers Decently upbringing With parents as an example As gems we shape them Fearing only Allah Devoting our lives for Him Bismillah, Assalamu Alaikum, Peace Welcome to Closing the Gap. I'm your host, Omar Dunlap. We have with us, as always, Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Welcome. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sheikh, uh, today I think it might be interesting to discuss the gap between dating and waiting, or dating and celibacy. Ah, oh, that's, that is an excellent topic <laughs> and one that a lot of people are discussing these days. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, let us look into this from the standpoint of what you first said, dating and waiting. I might add something in here because we're not talking about just being friends and hanging out. We're talking about dating, mating, <laughs> or waiting. <laughs> Is that a, maybe a clear way to say this more concise? Yeah, well, you probably definitely have the people's attention now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could have said the three-letter word, sex, <laughs> and then just, yeah. <laughs> I do want us to talk about this, and this is an excellent time, I think. First of all, let us look at what is being offered out there in the so-called real world. Mm. That when a person reaches a certain age, obviously they're going to be interested in members of the opposite sex. Prior to that, you find little boys, little girls playing together, and, and if you said, you want to play with the girls, the boys say, no, they're <laughs> girls. They're the, yes, the girls, what about these boys? They're yucky, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so we used to use that to determine the age. You know, say, how old are you? Oh, uh, you know, I'm 10 or 11. Are you like boys? No! <laughs> okay, you're 10. <laughs> it's like, but... Uh, it is something because once they reach that age of puberty, suddenly they start thinking about the members of opposite sex. And, mm. oh, look at this boy, he's cute. Mm. Or look at this gal, she's a real looker. <laughs> and they start uh, comparing, you know, like, wow, this girl's cuter than that girl. Or this boy, he's, you know, more muscle-bound than another. And, and so their attention and focus changes from when they were little playmates now to something uh, on a different level. And then as they go along, I'm talking about in in any society throughout the centuries, you know, as they go along, there's going to be more of an attraction to the members of the sex. This is normal. Mm. This is a very real thing inside all of us. Mm. So first of all, for our viewers who are youth and you're wondering what's going on inside of me, am I the only one ever had this these uh, ideas or thoughts. No. (laughs) Au contraire, mon frere. (laughs) It's opposite. Mm. So... Let us now look, though, to what is being offered for them. Because they say, well, I would like to go out and have some fun. Well, before you were going out and having fun, to go to the play yard, play baseball, basketball, soccer, all different things that children do. But now all of a sudden, it's, uh, no, I don't want just to do that. I want to go out and have fun. Mm. What is that all about? And then maybe we'll just go out and have pizza or we'll just go out and have a Coke or drink, something like that. And I want to go with my friends. All right, so you have boys and girls together. You're going out and this and that. And now suddenly people start getting paired off Mm. and uh, hanging out together. This boy and this particular girl, this becomes an item. Mm. (laughs) And then after that, oh, wish that uh, we would be even closer. We want to be... like hitched or <laughs> what they call it, uh, uh, promise rings, things like oh, this. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, But somewhere down the line, it goes from a feeling of attraction to something even more. And this becomes a problem. Mm. What do we do at that stage? Mm. Because now all of a sudden, 13, 14 years old, 15, something can happen here. The boy and the girl can be intimate together. And if that occurs, now this girl and this boy, they're no longer virgin, mm. and she could be become pregnant. 
uh, diseases can be spread. There's a, a number of issues that come up out of this. Mm -hmm. Now, in the West, of course, that's where you and I are from, uh, one of the things that, to deal with this is that in the schools, they offer uh, condoms for the children. Mm -hmm. These are just given out freely, distributed, without even the consent of the parents. And uh, when this first occurred, of course, I was long out of school myself and, <laughs> and never even imagined such a thing could happen. I wondered how, how logical was this. And they said, well, the idea isn't just to prevent pregnancies, but to prevent diseases. And this is how they got around that. Because initially some parents said, well, the, it, you know, it's almost like encouraging these mm. children. Right. But then they went to another level and they said, well, it's not just that, but m suppose something did happen. And you'd want your child to be protected against disease when they start calling this safe sex. Mm. Well, now we're on a whole different level than we were starting out with. We were just talking about becoming friends and getting to know each other. No, it's way past mm. this. And then what happens? Well, a boy decides that he doesn't like this girl anymore. He likes this other girl more. Or the girl decides, wow, there's a much cuter guy coming to our neighborhood and he, he he's so much more attractive than this other boy she wants to drop him and so they start going from partner to partner and from one mate to another this is where we get this dating mating mm. but what about waiting mm. now when i grew up and we're talking about the 1950s you know this is so it's like ancient times who wants <laughs> to hear about that but it was considered that if a boy reached high school and he had not been intimate with a girl that he was something wrong with him. You know, mm -hmm. he was not really circulating properly, you know. <laughs> but I understand nowadays this number is uh, in age is reduced. I understand mm. that there's uh, more uh, pressure, peer pressure they call it, on 12 and 13 year olds. Even children that haven't reached puberty talking about this subject as though it's a, it's a sign of manlyhood or a sign of, of maturity. Right. And... I think what we want to look at is the other side of this now. What about the one who doesn't do this? Mm. Well, you might think, well, that's the easiest subject of all. Just don't do it. But then well, how do they deal with these, what they call raging hormones? What's mm. going on with that? And on that side of the coin, the youth have a different problem. And that is that there is a physical buildup inside of them which will definitely affect the mental capacity. They will be attracted to these various different ideas mm -hmm. and looking for some form of gratification, trying to satisfy something with inside of themselves that doesn't seem to be able to uh, manifest properly. Right. And then you run into such things as promiscuity to the level that, that a... Uh, same sex, like boys mm. with boys, girls with girls, or what they call homosexuality. Or it could lead even into prostitution. It can lead into masturbation. It can lead into, you know, their, uh, the pornography, mm. wanting to get these um, books and pictures and going on the Internet and looking for these various different uh, things to stimulate and then supposedly give some gratification to this problem. Mm. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more, if you could tell us a little bit more about, about dating exactly. Like, uh, at what age are people starting to date now versus, I mean, because there seems to be some sort of difference between the ages, maybe 60 years ago. Uh, was there even dating? I mean, <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, that's a common question we're going to have. <laughs> Well, you asked the right guy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> 60 years. <laughs> what was their dating? Uh, just to make clarification, Omar, for all of our viewers, <laughs> there has been dating ever since day one. Oh, <laughs> There's sure. always been dating. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if Adam asked Eve if she'd like to go out for a Coke. <laughs> then I don't know. But... It, yes, there has always been this. And, it, and it, there's something more than that, though. There has always been promiscuity as mm -hmm. well. Now, we can look into the Bible, for instance, in the Old Testament and see some very serious problems that come up mm -hmm. with that. We can also see cases where people are manipulating other people's lives trying to uh, achieve their, their gratification 
through different means and uh, even to the extent of killing people. Mm. You might like to know this, that in Islamic history we know that the children of Adam and Eve, that this was uh, Cain and Abel, we call them Cain and Abel in English, their, their actual their names was Kabil and Habil. Mm. Now, Kabil and Habil are brothers, and they are also twins, but not twins to each other. They're each twins to a girl. Mm. Now, they were supposed to mate or marry their opposite twin. Mm. In other words, not their own twin, but the twin of the other brother. And it turns out that the one who is Kabil's sister or uh, you know, his twin, that she is not physically, um, uh, she, Kabil's twin is very attractive, mm. uh, very, very attractive and beautiful. Whereas Habil's uh, twin, is, she's not that physically attractive. Mm. Habil is supposed to get married to Kabil's twin, and Kabil is supposed to marry Habil's twin. But Kabil is saying, no way, this is Cain, see, and Cain is saying, no way, I am marrying my own sister. And Habil is saying, yes, this is not right. Mm. You know, this is not what Allah wants. Allah wants you to marry this one, and I'm supposed to marry her. Right. So this is what the fight was really about. In the Bible, we don't have that. Mm. But in the Quran, we find, oh, here's a different story. Because Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the one to give us the definition for everything. Mm. So, and when the Quran tells us, listen to him, he's going to tell you how it really was. So we look now to these, what's called hadith or traditions. We find some very interesting details. Quran also says they fought each other. Tells us to the extent that they were going to engage now in the one, Kabil is saying, I will fight you for it. And the other one said, no, I'm not going to fight you. If you mm. kill me, you'll take all my sins. Mm. But I will not fight you. So it says that Cain slew Abel, killed his own brother mm. over this situation. Mm. Now, that's how far back we can go and see manipulation of trying to pair off. Yeah, and, and the it, problems it causes. Yeah. It causes <laughs> murder. Yeah. The first yeah. death was over this. Right. MashaAllah. Well, uh, Sheikh, we're going to take a short break right now. We'll be right back, so don't go away. You're watching Closing the Gap. Fearing only Allah Devoting our lives for Him Reviewing the second rule of al mim as sakina That is the letter Mim so if the first meme is non-vowel or sakina, followed by a voweled meme. So I will merge the first in the letter and I will pronounce them as one. And we spoke abundantly on the virtues of seek a refuge with Allah from the outcast Satan. Especially for the first reciter, he's got to recite it out loud. <laughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فإذا جاءت الصاخة وإذا النفوذ زوجت Make sure it's ضمة وإذا النو وإذا النفوس Thank you for joining us Bismillah. Welcome back to Closing the Gap. I'm your host, Omar Dunlap. We have with us Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Salaamu Alaikum. <laughs> Sheikh, uh, just before the break, we were talking about the, the gap between uh, dating and waiting, as we were saying. And then you said dating and mating and waiting and all of the problems <laughs> that can come from this. And we were talking about uh, 
we were just getting into discussing the religious, I mean, obviously from an Islamic perspective, the religious undertones and meanings and, 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 and that sort of thing. So what does Islam have to say about, about this? Well, first of all, uh, and I think anybody who knows much about Islam or Judaism mm. or Christianity, they would realize this uh, waiting is supposedly the, the ultimate answer, right. uh, according to what we understand in, in our religions. And what do we mean by this waiting? According to the Old Testament, it's very clear in the Torah that a man cannot have intercourse without marriage. Mm. But it seems to have a heavier hand even for the subject of women. The women not even supposed to think about it. Hmm. I mean, this is really, really serious. Hmm. And in one part in the book of Genesis, you have a story there about the sons of Jacob. And one of them, his name is Judah hmm. or Yahud. That's where the word Yahud or Yahudi comes from, hmm. from this particular tribe of Judah. Anyway, Judah's son dies and leaves a wife. Hmm. Well, this wife uh, has not produced any children yet. So now Judah wants her to have children that are going to represent his lineage. Mm. So now he wants one of his other sons to marry her. Mm. And they don't want to. Right. Evidently, she wasn't that gorgeous <laughs> or some problem with her mm. for whatever reason. Right. I don't know. It doesn't say, but... Because we're talking about the Bible, you know. Right. So he insists and he forces one of his sons to marry her. Mm. Well, this one, it says that he withholds his seed from her. Mm. And meaning that uh, he's not having intercourse with her. Or if he does, he stops short of mm. right. uh, finishing the job. Mm. So now he kills him. Mm. He kills his son because of this. And then he wants another son to marry her. Mm. Then goes through a similar problem with that. So then it says that she puts on hijab, mm. covers herself up with niqab, mm. because this was something the prostitutes used to do, mm. according to the Bible. And she's wait, laying in wait for him along the road. So now when Judah comes by, Huh? Mm. He's attracted here. Oh, here's a prostitute. That's what it says in the Bible. Mm. And he wants to make a deal with her. Mm. And she wants to nail him. So she tells him, I want your signet, your ring, signet mm. ring, khatam, you know. I want, give me that, your, which is your promise to give me so many sheep and such and such and so and so. And he goes, yeah, sure, whatever. Right. Then he consummates with her mm. and goes about his business. All right. Then it tells us that she is with child by him, mm. which is the father of her first husband. Mm. Mm. Okay? Now look what happens according to the Bible in Genesis. He, want, he finds out about, oh, look what the wife of your son has done. She's now having this, she's having a child. Now he wanted a child with her, right? That was mm. the whole thing. But now he's saying, kill her. Mm. She needs to be stoned to death. It's probable. And they're going to stone her mm. because of what? She's a widow woman. She's a widow, not married, but she's going to have a baby. And it's because of dishonor to his tribe. We're going to kill her. Mm. But then all of a sudden she insists that he come forward and, and see who did this. Huh? She presents the ring. Mm. Okay, look at this. Whoever owns this ring owes me. He can't say anything. So what does he do now? Shouldn't it be, if you're going to be fair, shouldn't he be stoned? Right, if you're being fair. And he yeah. is married. Right. Huh? Yeah. No. Mm. He said, okay, that's okay, let her go. Mm. Why? Why is it now okay? Whatever she did before suddenly became okay because he did it? Right. It's very uh, patriarchal. Yeah. Ah, and this is exactly why so many men and women today looking at these verses say, this is not for me. Right. I'm not going there. That's not, uh, that's not my religion. Right. I don't go for that. Right. And it's not condemned in the Bible. Mm. 
We're not saying that they're encouraging people to go out and do this, right. but there's no condemnation here right. whatsoever against that. In this same chapter, uh, same book of Genesis, you find several other things. You could talk about the rape of Dinah, for instance. And this becomes really strange whenever they're considering about their daughter going off with somebody from another tribe. Mm. Now, they're not concerned about the fact she's having sex with this man. They're just concerned that they don't like this tribe and they're using the excuse that they're of another religion. Mm. But when the boy of that religion now says, no, we'll, we'll drop our religion. He's the son of the uh, chief of the tribe. Right. But we could all, come on, Dad, let's all change our religion. 100,000 people are going to change their religion just so he can marry this girl. <laughs> and they even make an agreement. And... Uh, Hamam, what was his name? Hamam, I'm trying to remember what his name was, the tribal leader. And he's saying yes. And they talked to the tribes, and the tribes all said, yes, let us go to this religion of these circumcised people. Mm. We'll do that. Now, you and I would be happy to look at all these people coming to Islam, mashallah. Right. But instead, they conspired amongst themselves, this same Judah. Mm. This is in his younger days. And he's saying, you know, we've got to do something about this. Guys raping our sister. This is, you know, taking her. And um, so they made a deal. Yes, you can come into our religion, but you have to circumcise yourselves. Mm. So they circumcised themselves. Mm. And all of them, and it says in the, like the third day after the circumcision, these guys are sore, S-O-R-E, oh, and yeah. they're, mm. you know, they can't hardly move. Right. These are grown men circumcising themselves, and right. you can imagine, or you don't want to imagine right. the kind of condition they're in. Right. And it says, then they fell upon them. They came against them and killed them all. Hmm. The sons of Jacob came against them and killed them all. Hmm. And it said they left none of the men alive. It took the little boys as slaves, took the women for themselves, and even so in the ground was salt. I mean, they really did it in, wiped out their animals, everything, hmm. all out of vengeance hmm. over this thing of Dinah. Well, how do you deal with that? So again, you find people saying, I'm not listening to that. But now you move to the New Testament and you find the opposite here, telling them, Paul telling them, don't get married right. unless you just have to. If you can't right. help yourself, then you can get married, but it's better if you don't. Right. And from these kind of teachings, we find today the Catholic Church, to this day, the most religious, the most God-conscious people are the priests, the fathers, the bishops, the cardinals, the popes, None of them can get married. Mm -hmm. The nuns cannot get married. And they say they're married to God. They're mm -hmm. married to Jesus. Mm -hmm. We've had discussions with them about this subject. And they don't have any answers for it. How do you take your best people and not allow them to propagate, mm -hmm. but you let the worst of your people <laughs> continue? Uh, ultimately, you're going to have nothing but the worst of the worst people on the earth. Right. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Mm -hmm. And when I explained that to two girls in a college down in Florida, both of them accepted Islam based on that statement. Alhamdulillah. Why? Because now let, what does Islam say? Mm. Islam has this easy solution in a sentence. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, when they're old enough to have children, get them married. Mm. That's it. Get them married as soon as they're old enough. Legitimate contractual marriage, agreements between the parents to know the other families, the children who are now 17, 19, whatever age, they are allowed to meet each other with their supervision here, uh, what they call chaperone. Right. Uh, and they get to choose who they want to be married to. They can refuse, Mom, I don't want to marry this guy. Okay. Or, Dad, I really like this girl. Okay, this is the one you want. All right. If the families agree and the youth themselves agree, then it's good. Mm. But there's no such thing as prearranged marriage in Islam where you're forcing anybody to marry somebody else. Right. What would you say to, for example, uh, some of the youth? Uh, what, 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 what could we say to them if they think that, uh, you know, this sort of uh, getting married? and You know, because some Muslims do, even though we were saying that you don't have to necessarily do it this way. But some Muslims do organize or arrange a marriage for their children. And some children are viewing this as sort of outdated and they say, well, we want to date, we want to do like the Americans do or the British do. What, what could we say? What does Islam have to say about that? The concept of dating and mating is not acceptable in Islam, clearly. Okay. Clearly. 
However, to get to know the person ahead of time, being chaperoned is what I just explained, mm. to have parents there. They can ask questions. We did that with our daughter. We had the, the boy come, and his parents are there, and he's, he can ask questions. He said, I'm a little embarrassed. We said, well, write the things down, and you can pass them across to each other and discuss it, but let us you know, be the, a part of what you're deciding because it affects us all. This is not just you getting married to her. Right. This is the family and a family coming together. Eventually, you're going to have to deal with the families. Mm. And it is families coming together, so there should be participation. It's a good idea for the parents to look for, from the time a child is born, be looking for a spouse for them, yes, but not to make a contract and say, my child will marry that child, right. and then force both sides to do that. They don't want to do that. You right. see a lot of that coming from some Muslim mm. countries. It's totally unacceptable. Mm. But it is exactly proper to be looking, investigating, what do you think about this one? Well, I don't know. And not put a heavy expectation on, well, you don't have to marry him, but I'll be disappointed and I'll curse you forever. <laughs> well, if your mother said that, what are you going to do? <laughs> right. you know? yeah, yeah. And, and this is why you find a lot of very unhappy marriages amongst Muslims, because they're not following Islam, mm. they're following his Islam. Mm. Mm. Right, that's the yeah. problem. <laughs> that's one of the big problems with that, yeah. Well, Sheikh, uh, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Um, oh, really? Yeah. I wish we had more time, but of course we don't. Uh, for our viewers, don't forget to watch us next week. And, of course, we thank you for, for being with us today. It was really enlightening. So, Jazakallah khair for that. Uh, and we hope to see our viewers next time. Uh, this is Omar wishing you peace. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, youth, tear upon the car of blasphemy. Follow your prophet and on evil make a victory. Let our righteousness be a role model to our children. Making new generations of believers decently upbringing. With parents as an example, as gems we shape them. Fearing only Allah. Devoting our lives for Him